Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to get the body you've always wanted. Maybe. Today we're building Alphonse Elric, a gentle giant and living reminder to another party member of that time they really dropped the ball. But you're such a good person, you never guilt trip your sibling. Also, you don't have to, because they're already so freaking guilty. He hit it. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be virtually indestructible. You've got a very tiny weak point and attacks hitting anything else will just wear the enemy out. You're like a Zelda boss. Next, you're an alchemist or full metal alchemist version of an alchemist, which isn't really similar to the Dungeons and Dragons alchemist. So we'll need a little more creativity. Finally, despite magical powers and a physical makeup of a tank, you're also an expert at hand-to-hand -hand combat. We'll get that in there too. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Maybe you'd like to roll. Hey, that's fun too. Just make sure you're watching your strength and intelligence. Otherwise you're gonna be having less fun. Intelligence will be number one. You're a huge nerd. Strength next, unlike your brother, you're literally a huge nerd nerd. Constitution after that, you're literally living plate mail. Follow that up with charisma, you're incredibly lovable, and I'll fight anyone who disagrees. Not in real life, but like, in the comments. Dexterity is a little low, but I don't want to dump it because honestly, the kid can move. We're going to dump wisdom instead. You never really get a handle on alkahestry, which I would consider medicine, and you can't taste food, which would technically be perception. If you haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist, you might not know that Alphonse is a human soul in a suit of armor, so I think variant human would be best. Right? Doesn't everyone agree? There isn't anything that recently became official that would work better, right? Except Warforge, so we'll use that. You get plus two constitution and plus one to any other ability score. Strength will be best, even though it creates a three odd numbered stat situation, which might make my head explode. Constructed resilience gives you advantage on saves against being poisoned, resistance to poison damage, and you don't have to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep. You can't be put to sleep with magic, and you're fully immune to disease. It might sound great, but be real. You're gonna miss chicken nuggets. Sentry's rest lets you stay awake while you take a long rest. You can't move, but if you see a homunculus up to no good, don't let them cause trouble in your neighborhood. Integrated protection lets you fuse with armor. It can take an hour, but it can't be removed without your choice. And you get plus one to your AC. You can grab a skill of your choice and tool proficiency. Persuasion and alchemist supplies work for me, and they work for the character. For your background, you learned acrobatics and arcana from teacher. There isn't a background that pairs those, so just build your own, call it teacher's pet, or whatever you want. It's your background. We'll kick things off as a fighter. Before you learned how to master alchemy, you needed to master yourself. We're choosing this over monk for our martial class, as monks don't work in heavy armor and fighters do. Also, despite being unusually quick, I'm pretty sure it's the massive weight of your fists that's dealing damage rather than the precision of your strikes. Clarification from a little whoopsie I made last week, multi-classing into fighter at later levels only gives you medium armor proficiency. If you want the heavy stuff, you gotta come here first. You get two skills from the fighter list. Athletics and history are great skills to have. For your fighting style, it's now tradition to use the class feature variants on Earth Arcana, which is free to Google, by the way. For the unarmed fighting style, which lets you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier and damage, or 1d8 if you have two free hands. You can also deal 1d4 damage when grappling and an extra 1d4 damage to creatures you have grappled that you hit with an attack. There's also Second Wind letting you heal yourself 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action. You can literally be pulled apart and put yourself back together as long as nobody hits the back of your neck with a wet paper towel. Bouncing over to Wizard now, you get your magic through studying, but really it's because the spells and subclasses work better for you. Sorry to shatter the illusion, I start with mechanics and work backwards with justification. You can learn three cantrips from the Wizard list. Mending lets you repair a small crack in something or seal some something small back together. Prestidigitation creates a lot of small effects, heating liquids, cooling liquids, lighting candles, cleaning things, making them dirty. It's basically better living through alchemy. Check it out in the player's handbook. This video is already going to be long. Mold Earth lets you mess with a five foot patch of dirt or stone, moving it up to five feet away, changing the color of it, or making a short message on it, or turning it into difficult terrain. You can use this to create a big hole, bottleneck your enemies, or warn allies of a trap. Creativity is key with both this and prestidigitation. Wizards can put six spells of first level in their spell book at first level, but can only prepare an amount of spells per day equal to your intelligence modifier and your wizard level. Jump triples your jump distance. You could say this is an anime jump or a bunch of earth catapulting you into the air. Long strider increases your movement speed by 10 feet for a minute. You're super tall. Shouldn't you run faster? Shield adds five to your AC as a reaction. You should buy plate mail as soon as you can. With that integrated, your AC would be 24. Hopefully the level two monsters can't bust through that. 
Earth Tremor forces a dexterity save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier on creatures within a 10 foot range, dealing 1d6 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, knocking them prone and turning the ground into difficult terrain. Detect magical as you sense magical auras and what magics are causing them. Working for the state requires some investigative work from time to time. This should help. Finally, Snare creates a trap that yanks creatures of large or smaller into the air if they fail a dexterity save. And don't spot the trap with an investigation check, restraining them 3 feet above the ground for 8 hours or until they make a deck save to escape, or somebody can make an arcana check against your spell DC to get them out. It takes a minute to cast, but if you and your brother get a second to set up a trap, this would be really helpful in a Scooby-Doo sort of way. Finally, you get Arcane Recovery, letting you recover an amount of spell slots equal to half your wizard level on a short rest, with second level slots counting as two levels and so on. You don't always get to take your weird robot nap. This is helpful. Really quickly, because I know people are going to ask why multi-class instead of just going for Eldritch Knight. The main reason is spell restrictions. Eldritch Knights can only cast spells up to fourth level and can only learn four different spells that aren't abjuration or evocation and transmutation is all over this build. We're missing out on ability scores and extra attacks, but this will be better for spells and actually get us a higher armor class. Second level wizards can choose a school, but you signed up with the state pretty young, so war mage will work nicely. Arcane deflection lets you add two to your AC or four to a saving throw as a reaction, but only if you're willing to use nothing but cantrips until the end of your next turn. I'm guessing you're only using this because you're out of slots for shield, so it shouldn't be an issue to only have 20 AC. You've also got Tactical Wit, letting you add your Intelligence modifier to your initiative rolls. This works really nicely with your low dexterity, letting you get into the fight as fast as anyone else would, despite your sizable build. For this level's spells, Feather Fall lets you prevent falling damage for five falling creatures as a reaction. Your squad is jumping down and off of roofs pretty regularly. Thunder Ray forces a Constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cube in front of you, pushing them 10 feet and dealing 2d8 thunder damage if they fail, half damage and no pushing if they succeed. It's a big old boom. Bad guys tend to not like being boomed. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Hold person paralyzes a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Pull up some ground and hold someone still. If you want to do that literally with no flavor modification, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp lets you make a magical hand come out of an unoccupied space in the ground that can grab a creature within 5 feet of it, forcing a strength save. Failing that, they're restrained and take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. You can force another strength save on follow up turns if they're restrained, dealing another 2d6 bludgeoning damage each time, and half as much on a success and they can use their action to try and break out of it with another strength check, but uh, hopefully they don't do that. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement. Use yours to round off your strength and intelligence. Both are important for this build. For this level's spell, magic weapon makes a weapon magical for overcoming resistances and adds one to the attack and damage rolls. You're not going to beat the homunculi with regular weapons. As a DM, I'd allow you to use this on your fists, especially considering you're a warforged, but if your DM isn't into that, you've got weapon proficiencies or just make something special for another party member. Shatter lets you blow some stuff up, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius and dealing three d8 thunder damage to those that fail. Inorganic creatures have disadvantage on this save, so it's particularly useful against other sentient armors. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Corrupting Earth forces a dexterity save on creatures in a 20 foot cube, dealing 3d12 bludgeoning damage to those that fail and half to those that succeed, turning the ground into difficult terrain. Comparing the damage to other third level spells like fireball will just make you sad, so remember the difficult terrain is a main draw. Protection from energy lets you give a creature you touch resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for up to an hour depending on your concentration. Ideally, it would be great if you could have all of these, but pick and choose depending on what you think you'll be fighting. Sixth level war mages get power surge, letting you add half your wizard level and damage to spells you cast. You have one power surge when you finish a short rest and get more when you shut down a spell with counter spell. You can store an amount of surges equal to your intelligence modifier, but they reset to one when you take a long rest, so don't be stingy. Oh, and grab counter spell so you can use these. It shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically and can shut down higher level spells with an intelligence check equal to 10 plus the level of the spell you don't like. Remember how I said you were fast for your size? Well, haste helps you get fast. It doubles the movement speed of a creature you touch, gives them advantage on dexterity saving throws, plus two to their AC, and an extra action that they can use to attack, disengage, hide, or use an object. That AC boost will make you even harder to hit, considering you are already at 19, this would put you at 21 or 26 with a shield reaction. Getting hit is bad, don't do it. But hey, 
Maybe you'd rather have resistance to damage. Your AC is already pretty high. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Stone skin gives a creature you touch resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for up to an hour depending on your concentration. Fabricate lets you turn raw materials into something more useful. You can create an object of large or smaller from organic material like trees or medium or smaller from metal or stone. You can't make anything super intricate, but you could make a bridge or something like that. It takes 10 minutes, so you can't fortnite a wall up, but it can be very useful if you're creative. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement. Currently, you're a 90% spellcaster, so invest in intelligence. For this level spell, stone shape is similar to fabricate, but for stone specifically, and it's much faster. You can manipulate a section of stone no more than five feet in any dimension in whatever way you want. If you want a weapon, get a weapon. If you want to put an opening in a wall, do it, champ. If you want to make a statue of Armstrong because he's the coolest, do that. Actually, this spell can only create statues of Armstrong. New on Earth Arcana. You can't look it up, don't try. Resilient Sphere seals an object or creature of large or smaller inside a dome. They don't want to be inside, they can make a dexterity save to jump out. Nothing can get through that sphere, no spells, no arrows, no nothing. The creature inside can move up to half their movement speed by pushing it like a hamster ball, and that hamster ball can also be moved by other creatures. You can use this to keep your brother safe or to lock down a troublesome baddie. Back over to fighter now, we've got plenty of magical skills, but we're a bit lacking when it comes to martial abilities. Second level fighters can use action surge, letting you make two actions per round once per short rest. Use this to get one of your buffs up early, lord knows you got plenty of buffs. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and it's time to explain a choice in the Geralt video. Y'all remember that one, right? A number of comments said Cavalier was a bad choice because Geralt rarely fights on horseback. But here's the deal, folks. That's not why I chose Cavalier and it's not why I'm choosing Cavalier now. Sure, you get born to the saddle, giving you advantage on staying on your mount and letting you get on a mount with five feet of movement instead of half but that's literally the only ability related to mounted combat you get from this subclass everything else is about protecting and defending yourself and other party members something both Geralt and Alphonse do regularly in fact unlike most of the other martial archetypes you get two abilities at this level instead of one it's almost like they knew that mounted combat wasn't always useful and designed a subclass that would be good at it but also useful in other places unwavering mark lets you mark a creature you hit with a melee attack giving them disadvantage to attack targets targets other than you while you're within five feet of them. If they do manage to hit someone else, you get to hit them again with advantage using your bonus action attack next round and to add damage equal to half your fighter level. You can mark people as much as you want, but you only get the bonus action attack and amount of times equal to your strength modifier. You also get another skill proficiency from a short list. Animal handling will let you get better at getting along with dogs, but it's always too soon to talk about the dog episode, so we won't be doing that. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence here. Spell casting is still your main focus. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice as your action instead of once, so you can finally move like the speedy giant you are. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Start investing in strength. If you want to balance your punching and your alchemy, you need to be better at punching. Seventh level cavaliers get warding maneuver, letting you use your reaction to roll a d8 and add it to your own AC or the AC of an ally within five feet of you while you're wielding a melee weapon. So make yourself something with stone shape or a crazy idea. Just carry a weapon. If this does manage to hit, the target still gets resistance to the damage and you've got an amount of these equal to your constitution modifier per long rest. So fight defensively and keep yourself and the other alchemists happy and healthy. Eighth level fighters will get our last ability score improvement. Cap off your strength. Lifting is cool, punching is also nice, and unwavering mark bonus action attacks are really, really nice. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. This can be a real lifesaver. Try to read your DM's poker face when they see you fail a save if it was important. I always make a grimace. Not the face, I sculpt the McDonald's mascot out of clay. It's probably why my games take so long. One last level of Cavalier to get Hold the Line, letting you make an opportunity attack on anyone who moves within five feet of you, regardless of whether or not they break engagement. Also, creatures you hit with an opportunity attack can't move until the end of the current turn, letting you lock someone down who might have otherwise gone on to do some bad stuff. Finishing things off with some more wizard levels. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells like Wall of Stone. This creates 10 10 foot by 10 foot panels of stone that are six inches thick, or 10 20 foot by 10 foot panels that are three inches thick. Each inch of thickness is worth 30 HP, and they all have 15 AC. Each panel has to be touching another panel. A creature you trap inside these walls can make a dexterity save to use their reaction to move its speed so that it isn't trapped. These stay up for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Hopefully the enemy didn't bring a ladder. Hold monster is like hold person, but without humanoid restrictions. So big old envy monsters can be locked down as well, which is always nice. Our capstone is the 10th level of war mage, giving us durable 
Marvel Magic. This gives you plus two to your AC and saving throws while you're concentrating on a spell, meaning that while you've got haste up, your AC is 23, and you can add five with the shield reaction for 28. And you still learn two more spells. Pass Wall creates a passage five feet wide, eight feet tall, and up to 20 feet deep in wood, plaster, or stone for an hour, no concentration required. That means if you think you're trapped, you just need to get within 20 feet of the exit and you're out. Free and clear, it's really helpful for dungeon delving. Transmute Rock lets you turn 40 foot cubes of rock into mud or 40 foot cubes of mud into rock. The mud takes four times as much movement speed to move through and forces strength saves on creatures inside, restraining them if they fail. If you cast this on a stone ceiling, the mud falls, forcing dexterity saves on creatures underneath it, dealing 4d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail, half to those that succeed, before covering the ground in all the mucky muck. If you would rather, you can turn mud into rock, restraining creatures inside the fail a dexterity save. They can't be removed without a DC 20 strength check from someone outside or until someone can deal 25 damage to the rock, which has a 15 AC. Quicksand's kind of a Bugs Bunny technique, but hey, it's also an alchemical one. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're hard to hit, with very high AC, ways to buff it, and ways to reduce damage and help your saving throws. You're also loaded with tons of spells that encourage player creativity, which means you're limited only by your imagination. Finally, unlike most casters, you're not worthless when you run out of magic. Plenty of martial abilities will help you contribute with or without alchemy. For weaknesses, wisdom and dexterity are your two worst stats, and they're two of the most common saving throws in the game. Hold person, charm person, fireball, lightning bolt, all are going to hit you effectively even with your added bonuses you're also rocking a concentration heavy spell list and while that activates durable magic switching spells is wasting slots finally your spells may be creative but they're not great at hitting hard making your damage output pretty low but if your party can outlast the bad guys you'll still win fortify yourself like the giant alchemical armor you are maybe just befriend someone who's got a little more damage focus so nobody rains on your parade Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Next week, we'll have another defensive anime boy. So if you like this video, you're probably going to like that one.